Hello, it's Miss Plummer, and we're back with Pet to Predator, Memoir of a Feline Hunter. This reading begins with Chapter 3, Toy Time. One thing that Jody did really well was play with me. I kid you not, she has a box of toys for me. She often would play with me. Her favorite was the fish wand or the feather wands. Okay, imagine the excitement of a fish flying through the air. I scurried over to the fish, but just when I'm ready to pounce, the fish flew back into the air for another journey. Back and forth, here and there, to and fro. Sometimes I was quicker than Jody's flick of the wrist, and I'd grab that thing and bite it for all it's worth. However, I must admit the fun far outweighed the taste. Blech! Gross! The wands only came out when Miss Fuzzy here had time to play with me. Sadly, sometimes she would come home from school and would be too tired to play with me. I am speaking the truth here. She would choose to grade student work instead of playing fish wand with me. Who would find papers and pens more fun? Well, since I'm the king, I would make my irritation known. First, I'd jump up on the table next to her chair and meow. Usually she'd pet me a bit. Then I'd carefully step onto the arm of her chair. Then she'd pet me again. Finally, I'd go one step farther and land on her lap. After carefully pawing her legs to make sure they were as comfortable as possible, I'd lay down. Granted, I was partly on top of her student papers, but I was in need of her attention. And there we find Jasper laying on top of a stack of my papers that I was grading. Are you feeling left out? She asked. Well, you are messing with your purple pen. Wait! You're playing with me, aren't you? Look! Look at that thing go! I joyfully reply as I attempted to bite and chew the moving pen. Jasper, stop it! I need to grade papers, she added with a chuckle. Take that purple pen! Oops! I accidentally bit her hand while attacking her purple pen. That did not make her happy. Do you know what she did? Do you? She... Grab the water police! How rude! If that's the way you're going to treat me, then I'm just going to leave and go into a different room, I whined. She didn't even follow me. She kept grading papers. Then she put the bottom up on her chair, stretched out her legs, and leaned back to watch TV. She completely ignored me. Well, I can ignore her too. Oh, this is super comfy. It's even softer than her lap. Jasper, king of the house, for the win. Chapter four, kitchen destruction. Did you know cats have really good hearing? Well, we do. Many evenings, I jumped up into bed as Miss Fuzzy Hair turned off the light. I liked to make her feel important. However, being a cat, I also liked to roam at night now, I don't nearly explore as much anymore, but when I was a young cat, I'd often investigate noises in the night. One evening, and I was, as I was minding my own business, I heard something up on the white countertop. So, being the eager detective that I am, I leaped up to see what was making that noise. Guess what I saw? It was a little bitty field mouse. Woohoo! I had a playmate for the night. So excited. I mean, Jody played with me a lot, but for some reason she preferred to sleep at night, so I started playing chase. Now, that little guy was quick. I tried to grab him by the tail, but he scurried down the wall. Crash! Jasper, what are you doing? I didn't mean to knock that thing over, but it was in my way of getting the mouse tail. Now I was running the corner into the bathroom. Boom! Yikes! There went the broom handle. I had to throw on my brakes as I saw my little playfellow duck under the dresser. He must have wanted to play hide-and-seek. I hadn't played that, but I knew Connor and Jody have played it a few times. They're not as good as me and Little Gray. I mean, Connor and Jody are pretty big, so they can't hide under the dresser or the couch or on the top shelf of a closet. They can only hide behind doors and in the shower. How sad is that? So I waited and watched. You know what? The carpet was pretty soft. I decided it may be time for me to take a little nap while Little Gray rested under the dresser. When my nap was over, I looked under the dresser and found that Little Gray had left. He must have been bored with the game. Oh well. I went back up on the bed and finished the night by Jody's legs. She liked when I slept there. The bed was way too big for her to sleep alone. She needed me. Before the sun even woke up, Jody did. 
teachers are odd that way. They often start their day before the world even opens its eyes. Jasper, what did you do? screamed Jody. She sure was loud. I figured I'd better go see why she was hollering. I sauntered, that's a slow way of walking if you want to try it, out to the kitchen and there she stood, her hands on her hips and her smile was nowhere to be found. Ooh. I looked around and noticed a few things I hadn't observed last night during my game of hide and seek. It seemed while I was scurrying about the counter after a little gray, I accidentally knocked off a few things, but at least the cereal box was still closed. I mean, the pitcher didn't break, it was plastic, and there was a little bit of a puddle where I knocked over the glass of water she had on the counter, so I... I meowed. I rubbed her legs. I meowed again, but the smile did not return. I realized that she wanted me to keep mice away, but she wasn't a fan of me wrecking the place along the way. Lesson learned. Chapter 5. Locked Out. My nighttime hunts became a normal routine. When I wasn't hunting rodents, I was doing midnight workouts. Some of my workouts may have included the top of Jody's dresser and desk. They might have included some bottles of stinky stuff being knocked to the floor or books being knocked off the desk. They may have caused Jody to awaken in the night and scream. Maybe. Well, it seems Jody may like sleeping more than she liked me. How rude. Since I kept disturbing her slumber, she decided she would lock me out of the bedroom. What was she thinking? This house was my kingdom. You don't lock a king out of a part of his domain. So I did what any self-respecting king of beasts would do. I cried. I cried loudly and I cried long and I'm not proud of it, but I knew she needed me. Her bed, as I said, was much too big for her alone. Let me in, I begged. Jasper, be quiet. Hello, I'm still here, I pleaded. I even put my paw under the door for her to remember that she needed me. Jasper, hush. After a few more minutes of pleading, I gave up and curled up on the rug, rug alone. This senseless behavior continued. I was devastated. She wanted me to keep little Gray and his friends away, but then she wanted to sleep and have her things left alone. I couldn't believe how selfish Miss Fuzzy Hair was being. She was turning into a big old meanie. Now, this next part is not for the faint of heart or weak of stomach. When Jody cleaned my litter box, she noticed that things weren't right. I'll spare you the bloody details. See what I did there? I gave you the details without giving you the details. I'm such a master at my words. The coolest thing happened. She came home early from work. I figured we were going to enjoy a nice long afternoon nap together. Alas, I was wrong. She picked me up and she shoved me into my plastic jail cell. Then we drove the long winding road up to the vet clinic side. Well, at the vet, Dr. Simon pulled me out of my jail and felt my body all over. She did all the usual unwanted things, but then... She became the general of my army and defended my land. Well, this type of thing sometimes happens when a cat's food changes. He's eating the same food he always eats, replied Jody. Well, has someone else moved into your house? Sometimes the stress of a new person can cause these issues. It sounds like anxiety, maybe depression. Seriously, it's just the two of us. Well, have your hours changed? Are you away from him more than usual? She questioned. No, I'm still have a teacher schedule that I've had for years. So nothing has changed? Dr. Simon inquired. Um, could a change in sleeping routine cause it? Jody said with a shake of her head. Well, how do you mean? Asked General Simon, defender of King Jasper's kingdom. <laughs> Well, he's always slept in my bed, but I was tired of his nighttime antics waking me up, so I started locking him out of the bedroom a week ago, or so ago, Jody conceded. Yes, if he's slept with you since his kitten days, then being locked away would trigger stress and depression, which can manifest, manifest itself with the litter box problem, proclaimed the conquering doctor. Well, he won this one, Jody admitted with a little grin. That was the last time she ever locked me away from her when she went to bed. And tomorrow we will begin with chapter six, which is toys, toys, toys. Have a great day.